Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today we're back for another brand new video. In today's video we are here with episode 3 of the Rangers Manager's First Transfer Windows. We need to think of a better name than that by the way, but we'll touch on that later as we're obviously here for the third episode. Now these videos do take a bit of time because there is a lot to actually go in them and this video should be extremely long as it's one of the most controversial, one of the most dramatic transfer periods in Rangers for a very long time as we're here to discuss the first window of the Rangers manager who has been heavily requested and the most requested name on the actual list and it is none other than Paul Le Guin. Now if you are still enjoying this series by the way and if you do like this video please consider hitting that like button it helps other people find the channel and again if you didn't mind subscribing as we have now reached over 57,000 subscribers which is crazy to say. We want to keep the channel growing, we want to keep it pushing in the right direction so any help would be greatly, greatly appreciated. But aye, we want to get into this then shall we and obviously we're going all the way back to 2006 slash 7. But it's mere 06 than 07, if you know, you actually know, as Paul Le Guin was brought into the football club. And again, we're not going to break the ins and outs of what happened to him as a manager, but we're obviously going to break down his actual transfers. It was one of the most action-filled transfer windows in terms of ins and outs than we had at the club in a very, very long time. And I think, as always, we'll start off with the ins. We'll break them down into three different categories. The ones we signed for money, the free agents and the loan signings and see what actually happened is we brought in a whopping 11 players to the football club in 2006. So aye, he was backed. How did it go? Let's find out. And I think we'll keep to the same format as we've done the last time and start off with the loan eases. That's usually the quickest way to go about this. And we'll start off with the very first one we brought into the club. It was none other than Big Phil Bardsley from Manchester United, yes, the very, very same as the knockout guy of Wayne Rooney, some might know him of, and some might actually know of his football and abilities, hard no nonsense shutdown tactics that he was actually pretty well known for, but when he joined us, he was obviously a young laddie from Manchester United, and he actually only played seven games in all competitions for Rangers, scoring one goal and grabbing one assist during his short period of time at Rangers before returning to Manchester United in January after the Paul Le Guin mess started to actually unravel and it's actually funny to look at because he actually played mere games for Manchester United in the 2006-7 season and he did for Rangers as he went back to United and ended up playing 13 games in all competitions under Sir Alex but however he was never able to really imprint himself in the actual side and take the spot of the likes of the Gary Nevilles and everything like that people as he eventually left and became a bit of a journeyman if you actually look at it however However, it wasn't a journeyman round the lower leagues. He actually played the large majority of his career, over 300 professional matches at the top flight of English football for the likes of Aston Villa, Sunderland, Stoke and of course Burnley and aye, he turned out to have a very, very good actual career. Not sure many of us would have seen that coming in the 2006 season but again, what he showed during that short period is what he brought in for his entire career. No nonsense and put himself about and believe it or not he's actually still playing to this very day as he's currently lining up for Stockport sitting at the age of 38. Sorry Phil, I actually meant 37 there, do apologise, you're turning 38 very, very soon. But that was one Manchester Yeloni. What about the other Loney? Well, it was also from Manchester and I'm actually kind of embarrassed here, I can't even make eye contact with you right now because I have to tell you my excitement about this loan I still remember it to this day, people, and it's why I didn't get overly excited now when we do sign a player originally. I know I love Tillman and that now, but this was before a ball was kicked. We signed Lee Martin on loan from Manchester United, and I thought this guy was going to be the next best thing since sliced bread. People, the hype machine that was running again, he was highly touted. It wasn't me just being daft. He was a skillful winger, he was a quick winger, and I think, oh my god, this could really be exciting. And hey, it just never worked out by any stretch of the imagination as he did try his, his skills and his tricks, and he was booted for pillar to post. And where I think it went wrong for Lee is what I praise the likes of the Kents, the Tillmans, and all that for these days is when they day get kicked, they get right back up and they try and do it again. When Lee was kicked, he didn't fancy it at all at that young le uh, young age, sorry, up here, up the road at Rangers. And he only ended up playing one game where he'd grabbed one assist before again leaving to return back to Manchester United in January. That's two low knees, highly touted low knees that Sir Alex gave us. And two of them 
We never played and returned in January. No wonder he never loaned us one again. <laughs> but where our previous loan, he ended up making a very good career for himself at the top flight of English football for the majority of his career and never worked out for Lee as he well and truly became a journeyman of the lower leagues. And from the championship, from League 1 to League 2, that's where he actually played. And just like Phil, he's still kicking a football around these days as he currently lines up for Dover. But moving away from the loanies, let's get to some free transfers because surely there's at least one free transfer that was a hit, right? Surely. People, let's find out. Let's start off with the very first one. They signed a 20-year-old from Rens B. It was quite, I wouldn't say highly touted, but again, he was apparently had some Paul Le Guin scouted him, brought him over. His name was, of course, Conroy, I believe. That's how you pronounce it. And this laddie didn't play a single game for Rangers and at the end of the season he was let go and he ended up becoming again a guy that just moved from club to club nearly every single year. It was carbon copy, join a club, leave at the end of the season, join a club, leave at the end of the season and he spent the majority of his career in the second and lower divisions in French football before hanging the old boots up and it's almost a very similar story to the other youngster, the other talented youngster from Rensby again that Paul Le Guin wanted to bring over to this football club by the name of William Strange and honestly, I couldn't think of a better name for this laddie because when you look at his career, there is very few things stranger and everything like that because after leaving us at the end of the season, because again, he didn't play a game, he went back to France, very similar to what we just spoke about. Again, bounced around a few teams in the second and lower divisions in France. But what's weird about this laddie, in a 10-year career, he played just 19 times overall. And that's at any level, anywhere. So I strange. Oh, oh, this it just pleases me. It just does. But in case anyone's fallen asleep because we haven't spoken about a player that's played a game for Rangers in a little while, let's get to the next free transfer then, shall we? As we actually brought in an internationalist, a Senegalese internationalist. The excitement starts to go up, but I'd be careful, people. As of course we brought in Ndaye, and the man only played three matches for Rangers. Again, he was towards the end of his career at that point. We weren't exactly getting peaked. The guy who played very well in League One and played very well and got a lot of plaudits in every flat when he was eventually here after a bit of a mismatch in his career. It just never quite worked out. Again, he played three times and guess what, people? That's right. He left at the end of the old season and hung up his boots not too long after that. So I think that's five people broken down so far and not one of them has played into double digits at all. In fact, if you add all of them together, they're barely hitting double digits. That's scary. I wonder why it never worked out for Paul Le Guin, people. But aye, let's get to the next one, shall we? It's got to change. Our luck's got to change eventually. And it starts to a bit right now as we, have, of course, have the Czech internationalist. A man that I actually liked, if I'm honest with you. I can remember thinking he was a good player, despite what we're obviously going to talk about. It's none other than Sunoco. And again, to be fair, I have some memories. I don't know if they're made up or anything like that. There is something in here of a couple good games during his time at Rangers. Maybe you can correct me in the comment section as he played 23 times in total, grabbing three goals and one assist to his name. But as the season went on, and of course, so Walter came back in to steady the ship at Rangers. It was quite clear he was not going to be a part of the plans going forward. And just like everyone else we've spoken about so far in terms of free agents, he left at the end of the old season. Contract rip. He moved on to Copenhagen before um, playing for Sparta Prague, a familiar four, if you will, and hanging up his boots after that, playing for just two clubs after leaving. With that being said, we've now reached the final free agent and we've well and truly saved the biggest name for Larson, which was one of the most exciting transfers around that actual time as we just brought in a goalkeeper, an internationalist for France who's played so well at the top flight of French football for ages for PSG under Paul Le Guin. This was a surefire hit. This was an absolute bonafide success. He knows the player, knows how to get the best of him. We've now got a goalie for a very long time. As we went and brought in Leono. No, not Messi. It is Lietze. I don't know if I'm mispronouncing that. Maybe I've been doing it my entire life, but considering the fact that he missed 90% of the shots, kicked at the laddie, I think it's actually a fair compromise if I say the lad's name wrong and it's so weird to look back and it's been even weirder because in my mind obviously I remember certain things and I've been going back for this video and searching for the last little bit and everything like you go oh my god just how many blunders can you make 
in an actual game is he just played eight games in all competitions. A goalie from PSG that was partners in crime with Paul Le Guin came to this club and just looked god awful in every single aspect. He played eight games, he conceded ten goals and kept just one clean sheet for Rangers. Aye, he was bombed out almost instantly in old January and he moved back to France. But unlike everyone else that we've spoken about so far besides obviously Big Phil is he went back to France and his levels jumped right back up here. He was back to being consistent, he was back being commander, he was back being the exact type of goalkeeper we thought were bringing in to the club as he went and played 120 games for Nice and again was filled with plaudits and player of the matches, man of the matches, excitement, la 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 la. It's just weird to actually look at his short time in Scottish football was a complete Disaster, but if you look at the rest of his resume, it's all plaudits and everything like that, so aye, that's what happened to him. The Mercurial goalie retired in 2011 and it also retires the free agent discussion as we now move on to the moolah. Paul Le Guin was given some moolah to spend, what did he actually spend on? Surely there's someday with success, eventually, people. Next up, we have Carol Svensson as he joined for reported round about 900,000 euros as he joined from Sweden. And despite playing in six games in the UEFA Cup at that point, which is now obviously the equivalent of the Europa League, despite playing in nearly every single game that we played in that competition and playing a total of 27 games in all competitions during that season, again, there wasn't any much future once Walter Smith came back in, wanted to go in a different direction. And just like everyone else so far spoken about, he only lasted one season at Rangers as we actually sold him. Can over in France for a reported £1 million. So we actually made a slight profit on the laddie, but then following his career, again, it's so strange because we sold him to can he was expected to do well because again he was pretty okay for us now and then we made a little bit of profit but within a couple years he was sold back to the original club from Sweden we sold him from who absolutely must have been laughing to the bank as they only got him for around 300,000 euros people that's an incredible sending to bring him back and again despite some excitement about him returning that. He never quite hit the success, never quite managed to find consistency. Again, injuries played its part in that as well as a lad. He really struggled to maybe get the games that he probably should have actually been playing. And that's where he spent the rest of his career over in Sweden before hanging up the old boots. Having just played 131 games in his entire career, Unfortunate for injuries in that as well, but I'll be honest with you, throughout the video so far, I'm actually getting sad, people, because we've not had one single hit. I need a win. I need some positive. Who's next on the list? Oh my God, it's Siebel. I can't even bother. Now, if you're not old enough to understand that reaction, that'll look quite foreign to you, but if you know, you know. If you were growing up during that time, if you were playing football and you missed a sitter, hit one out of the bar, scuffed a shot, done anything wrong on a football park, or you heard shouted at you for your pals or enemies, depending on how you looked at it, was SIBO. Aye, I heard it a lot, people, and it's a real shame because we signed this laddie for a gain. Money people and a lot of money round about that as he was our most expensive signing spoiler alert for the rest out around about two and a half million bucks if you believe what was actually reported. Again he came with a reputation but he was big, he was strong, he was a bit of a player you think oh he's going to work in Scottish football but it just never as he played a total of 31 games for Rangers scoring just two goals during that time and no I'm not talking about the goal that he scored versus Chelsea in the friendly that we all thought would be the turning point at Wisney. People ended up having a loan joining the second division in France. There seems to be a bit of a running theme here and he became a hitman again just like that and he ended up playing fantastic not only during the loan but the same team signed him the season after. So yes we finally got somebody staying longer for a year but just barely people as he went back to the second division in France and ended up notching 51 goals, 11 assists and 81 games for that side helping him get promoted 
again struggling when they did get to the top level and that seemed to be his entire career playing well at a certain level and then as soon as it jumped up to the top he would fall off an absolute cliff and not be able to replicate in any stretch of the imagination the talent that he maybe showed at a different level and ah, he sort of bounced around about there before returning back to Slovakia where he played for a couple of teams and everything like that done a couple of nice games got nice little praises here or there but it never quite reached the standard that anyone was in or hoping or expecting from the lad that we spent that moolah on and hiring at the 2000 and 16 season without an actual club and that's the story of Big Sebo if you wanted to know now you actually know and unfortunately there wasn't too much of a happier ending in terms of the football but apparently he's doing well enjoying life and everything like that so fair be it and everything like that but I will always be remembered for me anyway as every time I scuff a shot I still hear it in the back of my head, maybe you're the same, you can let me know down in the comment section below but aye, that was our biggest signing that was the biggest expectation but there was someone else that was also on the expectation bus and I'll be honest with you this was a player that I was really really excited about and after I see him playing a couple times I thought this was a surefire success I couldn't believe it as again we spent a bit of money bringing him for France I said to my dad I still remember this conversation to this day walking into the ranger shop and saying dad can I get Claymont's name on the back of my shirt and my dad went no, nah, I just stick to Novo. Now, I always thought he was trying to just save a few pennies because it's a lot less letters, but now I actually understand what he was meaning. He was waiting, just wait to see if he's here next year because, again, my dad wasn't really trusting the process at that point and it turned out to be right. And, I CJ Claymont 992 probably hasn't got the same ring to it as CJ Novo. So, Algen, well done for that, you. You called it. I'll give you your actual props, but it's so, so weird to look at Jeremy Clement's season, uh, season at Rangers and his overall career because unlike pretty much everyone again apart from Phil and everything like this lad he went on to have a tremendous successful career both before and after Rangers as he joined us from Lyon again for a little bit of money but after it was quite clear he wasn't going to be a part of Walter Smith's plans he ended up leaving just before the January transfer window shut I think it was a couple of days before in January of the 2006-07 season so he'd only been here six months having only played just 22 games and grabbing two assists again can anyone think of a bad game for him I really can I think he was pretty solid but for whatever reason he didn't make the actual plans going forward and we ended up selling him back to um, sorry back to France but to PSG Again, apparently making a slight profit as we apparently sold him for 2 million euros back to France. And aye, the guy's career just took off like that as he became one of the most consistent players around. And I think that's backed up by his actual stats because he went on to play 192 games for PSG, by the way. You're not a bad player if you can play 192 games for the French Giants like that. And again, he won numerous player accolades, numerous man of the matches, stuff like that, won so much praise during that time at PSG and then when it started to come to an actual end, he went ahead and joined St Etienne, another good French side and believe it or not, played another 192 games for them, the consistency of the lad and after another five years, he ended up finishing his career at Nantes as he played a couple seasons before hanging up his boots and again he's regarded as one of the most consistent players in French football for the last little bit. If we're looking at it, if we're honest to everyone on the list so far, that's probably one we'll look at and always have a what if we kept them because it does feel like a missed opportunity considering how well he went on to play throughout the rest of his career. But where again that feels like a lost opportunity and a missed opportunity to me as I think a lot of us judged him harshly because again he was sort of Paul Le Guin's golden boy and because we didn't like Paul Le Guin maybe that fed to um, Jeremy Clement and that's why we ended up moving him. We can't say we didn't get a little bit of luck or a little bit of quality added to the Rangers team from the Paul Le Guin era to do us so far because everyone else has lasted at least uh, sorry, one year maximum. Everyone else, people, bombed out, released out of contract, contracts ripped up, loaned out and then sold. Everyone's not last a single year until we get to the last player we signed for some money and it is none other than Mr. 7 out of 10 himself. That's all. 
I need to say. Everyone knows when I say Mr. Consistent at Rangers, we are talking about the one and only Sasa Papach as he joined Rangers for 500,000 and 500,000 never looked so pretty. People, despite a rocky start, was of course he joined as a centre half and had a couple really poor games for what I remember and some grunt holes and moaning supporters bus and everything like that. And then it just started to turn. He eventually got moved to left back. Waller has to get a lot of credit in that as well for that. And a lot of barking for McGregor for the rest of his career. And of course, Sasa Papach played nearly every single game for us for until that moment, until the end of his career. And if you're wondering for the stats, by the way, he played 210 games in all competitions for Rangers, scoring six goals and grabbing a cheeky 14 assists. We like that for Papach, but again, it was the consistency. So with that being said, people, that's us reached the end of the ends. People, I don't know if you're going to stick with me much longer. I'll try to make the rest of the video a bit sharper because I didn't want to take up all of your time. But that was the transfer ends. Hopefully, I've covered what you wanted me to cover. Let me know your thoughts and opinions, how you rate that transfer window. Did we make any mistakes? Again, for me, probably Clement. The rest of them I understand. Let me know your opinions as we now change our focus and turn our attention to the outs. Because trust me, there's a lot of them as Paul Le Guin cleans the house by releasing and selling and moving on. 14 players but don't worry we're not going to break down every one of them as some of them were youth players there's only one youth player we're actually going to speak about and his name was Ross McCormack because as of all of the names that was released in terms of youth players and young players around that it was obviously Ross that went on to have a very successful career especially during his time for Leeds where he just became lethal and a real leader of that some people I think misremember him or look at him now and think of his time at Aston Villa where again they spent a lot of money on him it just never worked and probably label him as that but if you look at his actual career especially his time at Leeds he actually had a very very good career spent some time over in Australia scoring buckets of goals here or there and that now he's of course hanged up his boots but of all the players that were released from the, the, that age mark it was obviously Ross that went on to have a good success and probably one if you look at it we could have done well. Some other notable names that Paul Le Guin released right away soon as he joined the club was obviously Alex Ray as he went ahead and joined Dundee. You had big Bob Malcolm who went to Derby and sort of floated around, had a couple loan spells before spending the most of his career again bouncing from club to club. He's obviously been involved with Rangers now over the last couple years and everything like that as well. Big Bob Malcolm and of course we released none other than another goalie as well which was quite a maverick. He had some good games as well and I think people misremember it. It was obviously big Votteries as he went ahead and joined Holland after leading us, having a solid career before hanging up the old gloves right there. And Mr. Believe himself, of course, left Rangers right away and went straight to Rafe Rovers. And that's, of course, none other than Don't Stop Believing, Marvin Andrews. But there was two real notable free agents that left Rangers to go on to really have an impact. And the first one is the big Greek, who's probably remembered for that wonderful header on a European night, Kyriakos, as he got up. Big boy header, he was released from Rangers and went ahead and joined Frankfurt. I'm not going there, people. Eventually, though, he moved to England and even got a move to Liverpool at one point as well. Unfortunately, it never quite worked out, but the fact he got to Liverpool shows he did have something about him. He sort of bounced back between a couple of clubs, went back to Germany and that as well. But again, actually had a very solid career for a guy who would have one really good game and then one game you say, has he ever kicked the ball before or he did the ball before? That's the kind of guy he was. But if you look at his actual career, the clubs that he went to play for and the level that he actually played until his last kick of a football, he actually turned out not too bad. And if you look at that and look at the success he went on to have, was that a mistake letting the big Greek go? You can maybe share your opinions down in the comment section below. But where I'm going to go next, people, and I wanted to get to this right away because there is one name that I remember we released that I've never really go at it. It still hurts me in here and some of you may know where I'm going with this. We release Peter Livingkrantz, one of, if not my favourite player in a Ranger shirt growing up. That guy was my guy. People, you know, I mean, the way people love the likes of Tav and all that these days, that was my love for Peter Livingkrantz. Could they, anything, scored so many big goals. They were so quick. That's what I tried to base my game on when I was growing up. I thought I was going to be Peter Livingkrantz. I never turned it that way, people. But I guess I'm wearing the shirt anyway, eh? So, swings and ruined the boots, people. But, of course, we released him as he went ahead and joined Schalke. And I think it was at that point I turned against Paul Le Guin. Like, literally, straight off the bat. As soon as he released Peter Livingkrantz, I said, I don't like this guy. Just turned on him, just like, couldn't care less about anything else. As soon as he released Peter, I was done at that point. And I guess the only solace I can actually take is if you look at Peter Livingkrantz's career, 
had some success at Schalke, by the way. Schalke, for of course, in Germany before going to Newcastle. And he's probably remain, remembered and spoken about the same way that we actually think of him up here. Very fondly and a bit of a folk hero, scoring so many big goals and being a very good player before joining Birmingham and spending his last couple of years there before retiring and, and everything like that. So, aye, he ended up having a very good career, only playing for three more clubs after re leaving Rangers and leaving an impact in every club that he actually played. But again, I was devastated, people, as the guy was my hero. But speaking of heroes, people, that gives us the opportunity to move away from the free agents again or the free transfers or the release players, whatever you want to call them. That was the notable ones that we actually needed to mention, the highest profile ones to the actually discuss where Paul Le Guin again tried to rule with an iron fist. We now move away from them and we only have two other transfers to break down and one loanee. And I think we'll go with the transfer first and we'll end with the loanee because in my opinion, the man deserves that respect to sort of end the actual video off with. But going out with the transfers, we sold two players for £750,000. That's right, the exact same fee. And their careers, I wouldn't say similar, but they did bounce around after le leaving Rangers. We'll start off with the first one. Big Nami, as I used to call him, because I couldn't say Namuchi. I could probably still can't say it. But we actually sold him to Lorenz again over in France again for £750,000. And where there was some excitement about this laddie, because we all thought he could maybe kick on, he never really did, people. He's played a couple games here, released from here, moved here, bounced around several clubs before hanging up his boots, never really finding a place to call his home where, again, we could see the actual best of him. Disappointing, but again, we got some money from the laddie because that was surely from the hype and the potential, unfortunate potential, that he was never able to reach. The next player is the Georgian centre-back that I kind of love, by the way, and I always seems to have good memories because I can't really think of any bad games. I think he's a screamer that he scored, but I can't really think of any bad games, and it's another name that I really struggled with for a very long time. It's Kuchinavili. I don't know if I pronounced that, but I just go fast. It's kind of like when I say Witcher's and Sauce. I can't say it, but I feel like if I say it fast enough, name day will judge me. So I've copied that. Hopefully I've got away with it. Probably know that I've just told you right enough. Damn it. But Big Vili himself ended up joining Blackburn Rovers and ended up playing 93 games in all competition. And as far as I can be able to actually find and see, actually got some real praise and got some fan backing and that as well before bouncing around a couple clubs. And eventually, as he was starting to age, he did go back to Georgia for a year or two and then moved on to the Azerbaijan League, where he spent a couple of years before hanging up his boots at the end of the 2017 season. So I, that's the two players we actually sold. Let's get to the very last player that left the football club during this era then, shall we? As he joined Zenit St. Petersburg on loan for around about £150,000 they paid for that loan. And it was none other than Fernando Rickson. Again, we mentioned heroes earlier on in the video and he's definitely one of them. And it was annoying that I remember my dad being really annoyed that if I'm honest. My dad never really showed much emotion with players leaving it. But I remember him being very annoyed and very disappointed and thinking it was very wrong to let Rickson go. And... The best way you can actually look at the way Rickson's career went on to do is he played well for Zenit. He came back at the end of it, done enough to earn a permanent move, and again, was a very good player for them for a couple of years before moving back to his native Holland for a year or two before we all know what actually happened. But I think the best way, because I've spent a lot of time talking about Rickson and that on the actual channel over the years, and again, I've spoken about him in so many videos, but he was a battler. He, he took what he'd done on the park, the, the hard fight, no nonsense, battling to the very end, off the park, fighting that devastating illness till his last day. And aye, people, that's the that's the end of the actual list. He was an absolute hero and everything like that. And that's why I just wanted to end the video with him and that, and that as well, just to give a wee bit of special shout, because not only did he also go on to perform at a different level, just like he did at Rangers, but again, we all know the struggles and the battles he had off the park right to his very last day. And that's it ladies and gentlemen that is the Paul Le Guin era hopefully I've covered everything you wanted me to cover I would love to know if you are still watching it was there any of these players you thought was going to be a success is there anyone you thought we shouldn't have sold moved on I just want to yeah, put yourself back to the 2006 season and tell me your opinions on these because we've been doing that over the last couple it would be great to see what you actually think if you can remember back that far people it's been a long while actually a lot of research for today's video hopefully you've actually joined it and 
With that being said, that's us reached the end of the old video. Just a wee brief second if you are still here, by the way, tomorrow, which will be Saturday, I'm actually playing in a charity game at Berlea, Berlea Sports Complex. Barely get that out. It's at Castle Milk. I'm going to be playing at 2.30, 2 I believe, the kickoff is, but it's a charity event that's encouraging people to speak out and speak up if they're suffering with depression and their mental health and everything like that. It's a really good initiative. People were partnering with Let's Talk, which is, again, a charity. It will be my charity YouTube team that's playing against them. Um, Again, I can't promise you a top tier match up, but we'll give it a go. There's going to be some family activities there like bounty castles and everything like that for kids. So if you want to bring your kids along, feel free to do so. Again, it's all for a great cause. And if you are interested in some signed content, I actually went to Auchenhowie the other day and got Ryan Jack to sign a shot for this charity. Shout out to Jack on that as well for wanting to help out my charity match. Really, that's sensational for the man himself. So if you would like to potentially win a Ryan Jack shirt. If you look in the description below, if you donate £5 or more, you'll be entered into a raffle. I'll do the raffle and one of these will win it in that as well. The only thing I would say is if you want to be in the raffle, if you could put maybe your username, your your Twitter account or anything like that in there so I can get you and find you a lot easier, that would be absolutely sensational. So aye, there'll be a game of football there, some family activities, it's all for charity and you could potentially win a Ryan Jack signed shirt in that as well. So what may could you ask for, ladies and gentlemen? Hopefully see some of you tomorrow. That would be greatly appreciated. But again, if you would like to help the charity and can't make it, please consider leaving a donation. Anything would make a great difference. And again, that's why we're here on the channel. That's why I came back after my own struggles when my mental health to try and help people out. And that's what we're doing, ladies and gentlemen. But aye, that's reached the end of today's video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it and loved to let me know your thoughts and opinions. And until next time, I've been Tijan over 92. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.